So for this examination, I'm going to uh, demonstrate uh, the Stout and Meller exam. Um, I'll start off by just introducing myself. Hi, my name is Evan Graham. Uh, I'm internal medicine res resident, and I'm just going to demonstrate the cerebellar exam on you, if that's okay. Uh, then I'll go on to wash my hands, and then walking into the room, I just want to make sure that the individual uh, is stable um, and that they don't need any urgent medical care. Uh, from there, I go on to vitals. Uh, in terms of the cerebellar exam, I wouldn't expect any kind of uh, vital abnormalities uh, to look for. From there, uh, what I start off uh, just on general inspection, I would look how they're sitting here, um, seeing that they have, are they stable, are they swaying from side to side in any ways that might suggest any kind of ataxia to suggest a cerebral illusion. Uh, from there, I'll just uh, assess their speech. Um, if you're able to just repeat after me, the British Constitution. The British Constitution. Perfect. Um, and so with that, uh, you can first note any kind of slurred speech. Um, a very similar speech that you'd expect if somebody was intoxicated. Uh, and then uh, also you can look for any kind of uh, staccato speech uh, where they uh, over kind of pronounce a lot of the words. Uh, so for British Constitution, you'd expect them to say the British Constitution. Uh, from there, uh, I go on to look for any kind of nystagmus. Um, and so I do this by just, if you can follow my finger, I'm just going laterally. And what you'd see is on the ipsilateral eye that I'm examining, um, you'd start seeing a, a pendular uh, nystagmus uh, when you have on the lateral gaze. And even with retinal fixation, so if you continue looking at my finger, uh, it doesn't extinguish. When you go back uh, to midline, what will end up happening is uh, the contralateral eye will end up getting a nystagmus as well on there um, that distinguishes over time. Uh, after that, we can go on um, and test uh, the finger to eye test. Um, before you do any of these kind of motions, what you want to make sure though is that they don't have any kind of uh, weakness because if there's any kind of uh, motor impairment, uh, this can get a falsely positive uh, findings. So I'll test for any kind of uh, strength abnormalities. Um, so if you can just pull your hand towards me or towards you, and then if you can push it away as well. Okay. And I would do it on the contralateral side as well, just to look for any kind of abnormalities there. Um, after that, I'll test the finger to nose test. Um, so you just hold your hand out, and if you can just, perfect, and then back and forth. And you can either keep your finger in the same position, or you can move it as well. And what you're actually looking for, um, so first of all, you can see an intention tremor. So when they start to move, um, it's a high amplitude tremor, and it gets worse when you're getting close to the finger. The other thing that you can look for is any kind of dysmetria. Um, so that's the inability to uh, target the right distance uh, of the finger. So you can either have hypermetria where you go too far or hypometria where you uh, uh, go too short uh, as well. So they have difficulties with that. After that, you can assess uh, for any kind of uh, uh, rapid alternating movements, uh, which is testing for dysdiatokinesis. Uh, so if I'll get you to just put your hands on your um, eyes and put them back and forth as fast as you can and you're looking at both sides as well to see if there's any kind of abnormalities. From there we'll uh, examine the lower extremities as well. Uh, so first I'll get you to tap your feet and again this is looking at both feet. Again looking for dysmatokinesis and then I'll get you to run your heel along the shin and this is uh, looking at their ability to do that as well. From there um, what we'll test, uh, so we'll test for any kind of uh, rebound. Um, so this is testing actually for hypotonia that you get uh, from a cerebral illusion. Uh, so if you can just hold your arms up, flexed. So there's two ways of doing this exam. The first one is I push down and you just resist me and then you let go. And what you'll see with the rebound with hypotonia is the arm will be way higher than you expect. The other way that you can do it is you can test the recoil. And if you're gonna do it this way, make sure you have your hand to catch it, otherwise they can hit themselves pull and then you let go and you'll see again rebound. Lastly what you want to test is um, you'll test with the leg hanging down and we'll do the patellar uh, reflex. So with this you want to make sure that it's hanging down freely and what you'll do is you'll test the patellar reflex and if the leg if it uh, if it uh, has a pendular reflex more than uh, uh, swaying more than three times um, that's a, another positive finding uh, for hypotonia. Uh, the last part of the examination uh, is gait. Uh, 
so what I'll just get you to do is stand up. Um, so first thing that I'll do is I'll get you to just cross your arms. You just want to look for any kind of tuck, uh, trunkal ataxia. Are they swaying in any way at all? Um, if that's actually uh, normal, you can go on to test for the Romberg test. Um, just to note, the Romberg test is not as part of the cerebellar exam. It's actually to test uh, for impairment with proprioception. Um, so with the cerebellar, uh, with somebody with a cerebellar lesion, you'd expect them to be ataxic at all times and swaying at all times. Um, Whereas if they have difficulties with proprioception, what you can ask them to do is close their eyes. And if they start to sway once they close their eyes, uh, then that would be a positive finding uh, for, for impairment in proprioception. Lastly, I'll just to get, get you to walk um, back and forth for me. And again, just looking for on the examination, uh, what you can note uh, with somebody with a cerebral lesion, uh, they have a wide base gait they'd be swaying side to side. It'd be um, uh, uneven and uh, often uh, uh, varying kind of steps. Um, if that doesn't bring it out just on walking, you can also get them to do a heel to toe test. And this is a more uh, sensitive test uh, for looking for a cerebellar lesion. And uh, that concludes uh, the end of my cerebellar exam.